which comes from our studios here at Valleys Radio. This morning is conducted by the Reverend Richard Harrison, the Eastern Valleys Missioner, with Chris Parker-Jones as preacher. Welcome to our Valleys Radio service. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Father, we do thank you that springtime is so near to us now and we pray that our singing this morning, our listening to your word will be a great blessing to each one of us because we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we have Chris Parker-Jones as our preacher and we're going to sing God's praises now.
Will you bow your head in prayer, wherever you may be? Father in heaven, we thank you for a night's rest, for a day stretching ahead of us. For some of us, Lord, it's another day in hospital. We ask you to bless us there and thank you for the doctors and nurses and for their skill. Some of us are recovering at home and we pray for your touch upon us this day. We would love to be in God's house with others who are worshiping and we pray your blessing upon services held throughout the valleys today. Let your word go out with clarity. May people hear of Jesus and respond to him and put their faith in him. Bless the leaders of our nation, we pray. Guide our queen and prime minister. Bless those who are engaged in important discussions for the welfare and for the peace of the world. And we pray that you will help us to do our part and hear, open our hearts this morning to hear what you have to say to us. Because we ask this prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. The reading this morning is taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 1 to 5. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. <laughs>
love to be harbingers of bad news, don't we? We love to come to those we know and tell them about disasters to try and gauge their reaction. We only just have to see an accident perhaps on the side of the road or on a motorway and it's almost a day they almost get out their deck chairs and cups of coffee and tea and watch what's going on. Well, if we bring that news, we bring it back to the people we know, it can confuse us if they don't have the reaction we expect them to. And we see from the reading that those who lived 2,000 years ago are no different to us. Let me read you the first verse. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. When Jesus was on this earth, Judea was under the domination of Rome. The Roman emperor of Judea was called Pilate. To keep the people under control, a demonstration of Roman power was required from time to time. Pilate had his guards enter the temple when the people were making sacrifices to God. And he killed those present and mixed their blood with the sacrifices being offered. What a cruel and terrible thing to do. What would Jesus' reaction be to this, they thought, when they brought this message to him? Why had these people been killed in this way? They must have done something pretty terrible in the eyes of God. Fortunately, God is someone who you cannot predict and certainly doesn't react to the things in the way that you and I would. Jesus immediately responds, Why do you think these people are any worse than you? They haven't been punished in a particular way that the rest of you would not deserve. Jesus tells them about the fate of some others who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell upon them. God sees us all in the same way. We are all at the same level in God's eyes. Put simply, we're a rotten bunch. No matter how good we think we are, or how bad we are, God sees us all the same. God doesn't have any favorites, but God does have intimates. Jesus tells us in this passage, if we do not want to have a terrible fate to befall us, we must repent to God. Without this repentance, then you're lost. In fact, your fate is much worse than the physical death that is mentioned in this Bible passage. What is this repentance? What does it mean? What is Jesus trying to tell us that we need to do? It seems that any subject that human beings are involved with, we soon create a blanket of jargon words to go around it. Take the computer revolution, the internet. Uh, most of you perhaps have your own video recorder. Well, who can program them? As men, what do those symbols really mean on a washing machine? Why is it that women can understand knitting patterns? I know I'm generalizing here, but unless you study a subject, you can't understand the meaning of the words. It's exactly the same with Christianity. We use words which perhaps we don't really understand the meaning of. Well, I have not been a Christian for very long, and I needed to understand what the word repent meant in order to understand what God was trying to tell me from this passage. To repent means to change one's mind and heart and to turn from the life without God to a life with Him. Beloved, you have two choices in your existence and I would like to point out right now that you're living in eternity. This means that you have a physical existence right now, but you also have a life to come. You can either have a life and eternity with God right now, or you can have an eternity without Him. This is what Jesus is trying to tell us. He's saying, if we repent, if we turn away from all that we know we are doing wrong and accept God in our lives, then God offers us forgiveness, peace, love, happiness, fulfillment, grace, and a relationship with Him, the creator of the universe. Or you can have death, which brings darkness, 
feeling unsatisfied, feeling that something is always missing, a coldness to your existence, unhappiness, restlessness, and guilt. God sent his son into this world so you could choose the way of light, so you could be set free from what this world wants to offer you, the fact that it wishes to grind you into the dirt and dust and keep you in the darkness of sin. If you repent with all your heart, if you repent with all your mind, because they have to be together, you have to bring yourself together, you just can't feel it, you just can't think it, you have to be a whole human being and ask God to forgive you and then grasp hold of him and then turn away from all that you know is wrong then what God has to offer you will be yours. But spurn what God wants to give you, then disaster awaits you. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but it will be soon, very soon. I know which option I personally want, the option of light and forgiveness, so I can be set free and enjoy what God wants me to be. I never have to be in that darkness or be alone or feel guilt for what I have done wrong in the past because he wants to forgive me. Just think of it if you don't accept that, an eternity of darkness and death, that's what awaits you without God. You may think you don't need forgiveness, you may say you, you can manage without it. You may say that you can't be forgiven because of the terrible things you have done. Beloved, I have to come to God every day and ask his forgiveness because I'm a person who loses his way. I don't always walk in the light, but I know I need God. I thank Jesus that he has made this possible for me, that with him I can be without stain and have a wonderful prize given to me every day. You have a choice right now. You can have an eternity of God's presence or eternity of darkness. If you want an eternity with God, pray this with me right now. God, I am sorry for what I have done wrong. I know I shouldn't compare myself with those around me. I know that I am unique to you. Please forgive me for what I've done in the past. I now turn away from all of that and accept you in my life, both in my mind and heart. Father, thank you for my forgiveness and the fact you so loved me, you made this possible. Amen.
it looks as though it's going to be a lovely spring day so what better things to do than to uh, join in with our morning service which this morning is conducted by chris parker jones from pontypool